This is an air compressor. This is water. You want to keep this out of this. Otherwise, you'll gum up your blast media, mess up your paint job, and damage your air tools. For about 150 bucks, I'll show you how I did it. Thanks for watching. Let's get it sorted. So for the reasons I mentioned in the introduction, you want to try to get air as dry as possible before it goes into the tank of your air compressor. Because on the other side, when you use that air and the pressure drops, all of that moisture and everything that entrained while it was charging up is going to come out of solution essentially, and it's going to get all over the place. It's either getting it entrained in your paint and mess a paint job up if you're trying to spray. If you have a media blaster, it's going to make that media blast uh, stuff stick together and just, you know, the tools get all moisture in them and then you got worry about rust and things like that. So there's a couple things going on. There's an ideal gas law, Bernoulli's law, Boyle's law. There's all sorts of stuff going on, but essentially, and, and each person can understand it in different ways, but essentially what happens is when you draw air out of the atmosphere and compress it, it gets really, really hot. So to take this from atmospheric pressure, press it up to 150 pounds or so, towards the end of the charging cycle, if I had put a you know, one of those little laser thermometers on that, that thing would be a couple hundred degrees pretty easily. Well, hotter air can absorb and hold moisture a lot better than cooler air. So as I pressurize it, put it in the tank, it's got a lot of moisture entrained in it, and that just sits. So in the bottom of your tank, as that air cools because of ambient, because you're not putting any more heat in it anymore, it's a pretty big surface area to help it cool off, that air is gonna cool, and all that water that was in there is gonna start falling out because cooler air doesn't hold water as well. Well, that water gets entrained and it goes down your airline and it goes out to your tools or your work site or whatever you're dealing with and you're going to get water all over the place. So one, drain your tank. Pretty much every day that you use your air compressor, you should drain your tank. I've gotten into essentially opening the drain and just leaving it open and allow that to uh, keep it dry because you're worried about rust inside of there as well. So what we're going to do is instead of taking the air discharge directly out of the compressor that's really, really hot, is we're gonna bypass the tank first. We're gonna send it out of here. We're gonna send it to an air cooler. Just gonna be sitting in the atmosphere, just a regular cooler, I'll show you that in a second. Then we're gonna come into a moisture separator that's gonna hopefully knock the whatever water is in the air out of that cooler air out of there and collect it and then drain it. And then we're gonna put it into the tank, hopefully as dry as we can get it without spending a whole bunch of money on a fancy refrigerator dryer, which are you know several hundred to thousands of dollars. So we'll walk over to the workbench, I'll show you all the stuff that I've got to be able to do this, and we'll go on from there. So we've got a plethora of things here that are gonna help us accomplish this task. First and foremost, this is the, uh, the radiator or whatever you wanna call it. It's essentially, I believe, a transmission cooler. It's a Doral. There's a, there's a bunch of videos out there on this stuff. And for some reason, we all ended up using the same thing. We probably just all fed off of one another. But this is like a 16 pass, dual flow and everything like that. It's counter flow, so it's, uh, it's pretty good. It's got eight AN fittings on it. That's these guys down here. So you need fittings for that. We're also gonna use copper tubing. So you just need, I'm gonna use half inch copper tubing. That's what's on the compressor. So you'll need a, a length of that, so, you know, several feet, six or eight feet of that, just so you can make some mistakes when you bend and cut and everything. I've got a mounting kit here for the, uh, the cooler, the heat exchanger to mount onto the back of the compressor. I mentioned the filter or the moisture separator. That's this guy, TBH is the company. And this is a, a little automatic drain here. There's a little float in here. And when it gets to a certain point, the float lifts and the water will just spill out. No regulation on this. This is just a moisture separator. The 8AN fittings, like I mentioned, these are uh, compression fittings to three quarter inch, or uh, excuse me, regular fittings. That's, I've already screwed those into this moisture separator here. You need a handful of those. And probably the single biggest thing that I had probably getting are flare nut fittings. So these are gonna get, the piping, copper piping is gonna get flared and screwed into the fittings on the compressor, both at the tank and at the pump. I don't know why these were such a pain in the rear to find, but I finally did so that I didn't have to do a whole bunch of modifications and worry about that. I wanted to stick with this stuff. That's an Ingersoll Rand air compressor. Some of the videos you will watch, they don't have this kind of stuff. 
So that's kind of unique to this one. So if you do have an Ingersoll Rand, make sure there's fittings and that might be a little bit of an uli for you. Because they are flare fittings, you'll need a flare, a flaring tool, like, like one of these guys that you can see, you can pick these up pretty much anywhere. And because I am not ever in need of a good excuse to get new tools, this was a wonderful opportunity. I ended up getting a manual tube bender and a tube straightener, which I'll show you that when I get to it because, uh, you know, because that looks like fun. A little dark back here and sorry about the glare from that light, but this is the back of the compressor and this is essentially the fan that the, the motor runs off. The pulley goes that, out that way to the electric motor. So I'm gonna mount the air cooler right here. I'm just using those twist ties. The, uh, the mounting kit that I showed you, so I'm gonna remove this back uh, cover, mount it, and then bring it back. So again, apologize for the glare, but I did get the mount, the, uh, the heat exchanger mounted back there, but the, uh, this mounting kit had springs on it, so I put the springs behind there, so it'll give me a little bit of vibration uh, proof so that as this thing vibrates, I don't put a little too much, when the copper pipes come in, I don't wanna overstress the copper pipes and, and make them brittle for our work hardening. So now, the other thing I did was just drill, I just drilled holes into the, uh, the compressor unit itself and mounted screws back here with shake proof washers so that again, for the thing doesn't fall off and mounted the moisture separator on it. So now I've got the copper pipe that's gonna come out of the compressor and goes into the tank. I'm gonna take that off and then start measuring pipe, straightening it and bending it and everything so that it comes in and I get all that stuff lined up. So again, I'm gonna go out of the Compressor into the heat exchanger, out of the heat exchanger, into the moisture separator, out of the moisture separator, into the tank. I've got the tank completely vented. I still have the drain on the bottom completely open. Power's off, unplugged, the whole thing, so this thing doesn't, you know, come up and bite me. So we'll go ahead and get that pipe off. I'll go over and we'll start uh, playing with some copper pipe. So as I mentioned, I always uh, am interested in getting some new toys. One of the ones I got here was a tube straightener. Never tried one of these before. So I've got my copper tubing here that uh, was in a nice even uh, roll. So now obviously I've got to straighten that out. If I wanted to, uh, to do this by hand and bend it by hand, I could have done that with no problem. There's no reason you have to go out and get the tube bender and all that stuff. Again, it's just maybe one of these days I'll have another use for it. And if not, it was fun while it lasted. So essentially, I think all we're doing here is just kind of passing this through and you're just straightening it and you're just pinching it between these rollers and getting it to uh, getting it to flow for you. All right, so that looks pretty good. And, except, and again, except for the very ends, it's pretty straight. So I'm gonna come back maybe an inch or two on each of these until I get to a point where it looks pretty straight and just eyeballing it. I'm gonna cut the tube there. So again, the desire is to make this last little bit as straight as possible so that my compression fittings and everything are, are as squared up to the inside of the fitting as possible. So that's a, that's a pretty cool little tool. The next one though I think is gonna be more cool is the bender. So this is the ratcheting tool bender that I picked up at Amazon. Carvalax is the company, but Harbor Freight makes them. It's a ratcheting tube bender that both will bend in both directions, both a con, you know, bending it out and a bending it in. So I've never used one of these things before. It's obviously got all sorts of different dies in it. And you pick the right die for the right size tube that you're gonna do and go from there. So we're gonna go over to the air compressor and start marking the tube up and uh, see where I need to make my bends and all that kind of stuff. I've never done this stuff before. I don't know how, if there's any tricks or anything like that, I'm not gonna really worry about it. All I wanna do is be able to connect tube that doesn't leak. So if you really want something pretty and nice, this is not the video to watch. So I will um, get this though, do all this off camera, but uh, as far as measuring and all that kind of stuff and how it's gonna uh, fit and how I go about it, you'll, uh, you'll see the end product. So here's the pipe, bent pretty well. There's some crimps in here and stuff. I'm not too worried about it. Maybe if I put some heat on it, it might uh, bend a little smoother, but I'm not looking for a completely beautiful bend there. A couple things that I did not mention, if you do have any fittings or anything like that, which for all of this, you're gonna have fittings. Make sure you put those fittings on before you deform the pipe or put your, um, your compression fitting on or something like that. Don't forget that stuff. Also for the compression fittings, the little olive nuts that go on the pipe and kind of get clamped, they tend to get destroyed when you make one of these compression fittings, so that's pretty much a one-shot deal. So if you mess one up or something like that and you have to redo it, 
you're going to probably mess up that olive nut. So I'd recommend going ahead and having a, a couple extra handfuls of these. I don't know, half a dozen or so. All the fittings that I came, that I got came with olive nuts, but only one. So just make sure you have that. But this tube right here is going to go from the compressor into the heat exchanger. So I'm uh, happy with that. It fits pretty well. And then we'll go ahead and make the rest of the pipes up. And then I'll show you all my plying. I have everything piped in. The, uh, the hard, hardest pipe to make was this guy right here, just because it's a pretty tight bend to get into the moisture separator. So this is the outlet. So I'll bring you around back here real quick, show you uh, the mounting back there. And again, low production value, so I apologize for the light, but the cooler is mounted with the AN fit fittings here. This pipe's not beautiful, but this pipe's pretty good. Comes out of the compressor, comes into the air cooler, gonna go through a bunch of times and come out and go into the moisture separator. Coming into the moisture separator here, through that, out that, and into the tank. Like I had mentioned, it's gonna be a couple hundred degrees coming out of the compressor and I'm hoping for 60, 70, 80 degrees coming into the moisture separator. The moisture separator captures as much moisture as possible and then it goes into the tank. So I haven't tested this yet. As you can see, this one doesn't go straight in. I had mentioned earlier that you wanna to try to get these straight in, so we'll see if the olive nut holds. So I'm going to go ahead and light the thing off. I'm not going to uh, bore you with that, but I'll show you some temperatures as long as it doesn't start leaking on me. And then uh, we'll come back here in a second and hopefully we'll op test it set. Pressed it up a little bit. I'm sitting at about 50 pounds. I don't hear any leaks. There's, uh, there's some fluid up here leaking, so that, that might be uh, blowing by some water, so I might have a little bit of a leak there. Probably not been running long enough to really get any temperature, but I'll see if I can get anything. Yeah, so that's only looking at about 75 degrees, but it's hotter than that. I can't really touch that. And then down here, grab it with no problem, so that's good. That's the idea. Oh, there we go. If I hit the side at about 120 degrees on the compressor and uh, yeah, about ambient 64 degrees or so coming out of the cooler. So I'm going to snug up this fitting right here and then we'll press it up to 100 pounds and stop there and see what happens. 100 pounds. Go around and listen. Don't hear anything. Let's look at temperatures. 190 or so coming off the side of the uh, compressor. It's still 65 or so coming into the moisture separator. Definitely can grab that with no problem. That guy can barely touch and pressure seems to be holding on. So now we'll go up until the thing automatically shuts off, probably 140 pounds or so. Do a final check and then uh, probably call it good. Sitting at 140 pounds. Compressor. It's 245 degrees. Freaking hot. I did have a little bit of leakage here. Still looks like a moisture leakage. Obviously, if the moisture is coming out, the air is coming out. So I might have to redo that pipe. But I can still grab that with no problem. So that's uh, that was the intent here was to make it so the water coming in here. Or the air coming in here is relatively cold, and at least for now, it is. But otherwise, I would have been pumping 280 degree, 240 degree air directly into the tank. Now, it's not to say that as this thing runs and I use it and it's on and off and on and off and continually, you know, has demand on it that that's not going to get up in temperature. But it's got to be better than 230 degrees going into the tank. So we're going to turn the compressor off now. I'm going to keep it up. I've already lost about five pounds. I'll probably have a really slow leak somewhere but uh, we're gonna turn the compressor off, push it back against the wall, let it sit, and uh, we'll call it good. All right, everybody, that's all I got. Still holding about 145 pounds, so any leaks that I may have had uh, either sealed themselves up or it was just the uh, air a little bit cooling off a little bit and the pressure dropping. So $150, $175 or so that this cost, I, I think it's more than worth it to keep the abundance of moisture out of your air, not gumming up your tools and rusting them out and messing up paint jobs and, and gumming up blast media. And uh, definitely, definitely worth it. Definitely something you could do. You can hand bend this pipe. You don't have to go and spend all the money on the pipe benders and everything like that. Copper piping is not real cheap, but there is going to be a list of all the fittings and everything that I use in the description. So make sure you check that out for what you might need. But again, your compressor is probably going to be different than this one. So make sure that the fittings that you get are right for you and just don't trust mine that it's going to work for all applications. So definitely worth it. I highly recommend it. Thanks again for watching. Have a good rest of your day.
Cheers.